Hi everyone, Alicia and I travelled Europe in the summer of 2023 and we had a wicked holiday. It started in Berlin, then a quick three days in Ispra, Italy, followed by three days in Florence in the Tuscany region, and finished up with four days in La Spezia in the very popular Cinque Terre. After our stay in Ispra, it was off to Florence. We dropped off our rental car at the Milan Malpensa airport and then took the train into Milano Centrale. If you have not been to the Milan train station, this is a warning. It's big, it's busy, and it's chaotic, so be prepared. There's a lot going on here, so once you get to Milan, take your time when purchasing your train ticket to Florence. You'll be looking for Forenzi Santa Maria Novella, which is the Florence train station. Once this is done, sit back and enjoy the ride and the scenery. You may have a transfer in Bologna, but don't panic. You will locate the train you need to Florence, and just remember, trains in Italy are always behind schedule, so you'll be fine. After a three hour train ride, we made it to Florence. Immediately we saw the volume of people. Florence in midsummer is a busy place, so be prepared for the crowds. We booked a place 15 minutes from the train station. It's a bumpy walk with suitcases, but there are other modes of transportation that will get you to your destination. Again, Alicia found a beauty room on Airbnb, and this was one of the nicest places we have ever stayed in. It was well decorated, clean, quiet, and very secure. No one was getting in here without a key. Our first full day of our stay was spent in the city taking in the sights. Florence will literally blow your mind. There's a lot going on and lots to do, but the city is a museum in itself with the narrow streets and the monuments. We simply just spent our day on a walking tour. Ponte Vecchio, or the Old Bridge, is a cool visit but we spent very little time here. We walked it, saw the shops on the bridge, and then continued on to see what else was happening in the city. Now after all this sightseeing, this seemed like a good idea, and there is a lot to choose from. I've read many articles on things you must see at least once in your life, and the Duomo in Florence always seems to be on those lists. And after being here, and walking towards this special place, I can now understand why. Seeing this in person will leave you speechless. The Duomo's construction began in 1296, and it took 72 years to complete, and the entire time I was here, I kept asking myself, how did they do this? An absolute masterpiece and a genuine work of art. Speaking of art, there are many vendors selling their works of art, so you have many options on bringing home an authentic piece of Italy's amazing past. We just continued to walk, and each section of the city we explored, we continued to see things that took our breath away. As big as Florence is, and as busy as it was, it was still possible to find a street that was totally empty. An amazing day in Florence. Okay, after you. Our second day, we jumped on the train and ventured to the ancient streets of Siena. There are so many medieval era villages to visit in this region, and most of them are easily accessible from Florence. So it's a tough decision, but we decided to check out Siena. The train ride was just over an hour. And once you get here, just yeah. follow the crowd into the mall where you will go up a ridiculously steep and long escalator ride. Pretty wild. Once you exit these doors, you will see the old city in the distance and just walk towards it and you will eventually find yourself stepping through one of the old fortress gateways. And just like that, you'll be stepping back in time. Siena is absolutely stunning, and I know I've said this a lot, but each turn you make onto a new street will leave you speechless. Man, I love Italy. Siena was much bigger than I had anticipated, and we walked in many areas where we literally had the place to ourselves. We found a small alleyway which led into a piazza, and we were totally alone. It was so amazing.
Our plan for the day, like so many of our plans, was not to have a plan. We were there to simply walk and take in the scenery, and when we stumbled into this part of the town and found this view, we hung out here for a long time. So incredible to see. When in Siena, take your time and take in this open air museum. All you need to do is walk, but don't forget to take a few breaks as well. And be prepared, it's hot, so bring a water bottle and there are fountains located throughout to top up. And in this heat, here is a place you probably won't need to stop in to use. Now after walking a couple hours virtually on our own, we made it to the city center, Piazza del Campo. And this is where the hustle bustle of the crowds were. Piazza del Campo is shockingly huge. I was really surprised. You can spend a lot of time here in this part of the city, but we had a full day walking, eating, and drinking, and we're ready to check out and catch the train back to Florence. Siena is a really neat city, and two days here would be plenty, but if you like the tranquility of travel and being around smaller crowds, Siena could definitely be used as a home base during a stay in Tuscany. Day three, we woke to this. So cool. On this day, we double dipped, taking in another medieval city, as well as venturing into the countryside to visit a winery. Arezzo is just 80 kilometers southeast of Florence, so once again, an easy destination to make for a day trip. Arezzo is another beautiful walled city and is much, much quieter than Siena. Once you exit the train station, just walk straight ahead and you'll be in the old town. Arezzo was known as the city of gold and of high fashion and there's a ton of history here from the Romans conquering it in 311 BC, along with the British and the New Zealand troops liberating it during World War II. But the city is most famous for a game of chivalry dating back to the Middle Ages called Giostra del Saracino. Basically, it's a massive jousting tournament and takes place twice a year in June and September and draws big crowds. So just like Siena, the views of the countryside are just as stunning and their piazza, fittingly called Piazza Grande, really popped out at us as the buildings displayed the many coats of arms of the region. And as you can see, there's virtually no crowds. Arezzo has a very relaxed pace, and this is a great spot to just grab a bite and chill. So for the second part of the day, we jumped on a city bus that takes you outside the city to the neighboring fields that make Tuscany so famous, wine country. As you can see, the bus is empty. So where we were going, we knew it was going to be quiet. We decided to head towards Antria to visit the winery of Villa La Ripa. The bus ride to Antria takes about 15 minutes. And as you can see, there's no one around. This was gonna be an interesting afternoon. Walking out in the countryside was so relaxing. And again, Look at these views, simply spectacular. We made it to the crossroads of the village and they make it easy to find the winery of your choice. There are a few wineries in this area, but we decided to head towards Villa La Ripa. And yes, there is supposed to be water running down this stream. Villa La Ripa is simply gorgeous. It's everything you would think a winery would be in Tuscany. There are tours here, which we did not do, but we were lucky enough to meet two wonderful ladies who let us sample some wines and gave us a brief history lesson on the winery and the region. So this was our journey through Florence in the Tuscany region. Four nights and three days went super fast, but we did lots, saw lots of things, but never felt rushed in doing the things we did. Florence is a must-see. The city is truly spectacular and has lots to offer, especially when it comes to dining. A couple days in Florence is plenty and it is a great spot to stay to make those day trips to the neighboring cities. We are so happy we had an opportunity to make it to Tuscany and it is a region that I would love to spend more time in and hopefully return one day. Thanks for watching everyone and again if you're looking for a travel agent you can find Alicia on Instagram and she would love to book your next trip.